big gigs, impossible gigs, silent gigs, maybe even your gig. Welcome to The Hump. Thanks for joining us and thanks for joining us again, you, Sophie, <laughs> Chase <laughs> and Julius. Aww. I can be nice sometimes. Before we start, let's check out what's happening in Project News. We are giving away $55,000 worth of gear at Entec. To win, register to attend now because at each city we draw five prizes worth a total of $11,000. The earlier you register, the better the odds to win. Entec is in February, visiting five cities across Australia. Yesterday, CX attended a dinner to celebrate 25 years of ULA Group, who have celebrated by releasing a hardback coffee table book detailing their extensive work. Congratulations, Conviviano, shown here with his daughter, Alana. Jump online at juliusmedia.com and subscribe to ProTech News, free in your inbox every Wednesday. Welcome back. Lots of gigs happening. Mm. I just don't get to see some as much as I should. So what's happening? To, to, what's news? Okay. What's um, occurring? Well, I think here on the home, I think we need to celebrate the uh, local crew and p things that people have been doing. Look, here's a, here's a nice one that I found, uh, actually, actually on Haycom's uh, Facebook page. We'll just throw up the video now because it's pretty impressive. They're out at the Dome in Homebush and they're working with uh, NW Group, or Norwest as they're known to some. Um, it was a nice one. It was for a client called CI Events. Uh, audio and lighting supplied by Norwest, powered by NW Group. Uh, technical production by Haycom, uh, lighting designed by our mate Ziggy Ziegler and operated by Ben Ronchka. Uh, some nice little bits of gear on the gig. We had 24 quantum washers, 16 Mac Vipers, 32 clay packy Sharpies. That's what you can see throwing up the beams as the perimeter lighting feature there. Uh, 10 VL3 3500 washers, uh, 60 sun strips and, 60, and 74 lead goes with 75 pendant droppers and 32 elacoustics kudo as four hangs of eight. Just a really nice gig. The video came up well. I think mm. the, the crew should be pretty happy with that one. Absolutely. And you know what? We should be seeing, there should be something like that every week on this show mm. and we need people to send mm. it in to us. We want to see everyone. You've all got GoPros, you've all got iPhones, you've all got DSLR cameras. We want you to film it and we want to show people what we do around here. You we know? appreciate we do, we do. We've got a play, always got a place for your video on this show, so please. Not Julius's video, so. No, no, they're, they're best kept private. Yeah. You know, lock What's wrong with my <laughs> Anyway, if you have got something, please send it through to this address. Send us a link, send us a Dropbox link, send us whatever you got. We want to run it. So, yes, I know everybody's out there filming everything, so let's have a look at it. So, mm. all right, we'll be back after this. Metallica being from the Bay Area, especially myself, like to hook up with people who are local. Needing a smaller wedge for travel reasons, still keeping the same sonics of the giant Metallica sound was a challenge, but not for Meyer, it seems. Very pleased with uh, you know, the duties of guitar and vocals uh, coming through the same wedges, needing to have clarity in both, and this is, this is what happens with Meyer, so. Oh no! 
night long In each and every single song Here comes my macro Macro, macro, macro Bose's new Showmatch Delta Q array loudspeakers feature Delta Q next generation array technology, offering the ability to build traditional J array or constant curvature and Delta Q array configurations, allowing both portable rental and installed applications to deploy selectable coverage control. Showmatch arrays are capable of generating a maximum SPL of up to 145 dB at peak, or when SPL is less critical, they offer the ability to achieve full coverage with fewer modules for significant weight, height and cost savings. Welcome back. Now talking impressive gigs. Julius, you've been to a silent opera? Yes, yeah, Sydney, uh, Sydney Opera House Forecourt. Mm. Um, the Australian Opera staged the silent opera there. Um, mainly because of the width of the steps making it almost impossible to get sound distribution. You'd need maybe eight um, mm. ground stacks, which mm. would ruin the vista being the opera house itself mm. is mm. the backdrop. But also because of the ludicrous um, noise laws there mm. uh, imposed because of some rich, wealthy buggers living next door. Even if it's only one or two. Yeah, there's two of them, they're troublemakers. Mm. Um, so interestingly, uh, the Opera bought uh, 3,000 FM receivers of a kind that Norwest uh, recommend from their Olympics experience. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was broadcast in narrowcast on a temporally allocated frequency, which they obtained from ECMA. And uh, Technical Audio Group won the deal to supply 700 sets of, uh, 3,000 sets of uh, headphones. Mm -hmm. And it worked. Um, the front of house and monitor engineers mixed on the headphones. And it was interesting because um, there was a bit of intrusion from low frequency, things like party boats on the harbour, but that's mm. going to happen anyway. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I can see a hybrid occurring where you have noise limits. So perhaps what you do is you rent the concert goers the receiver and they use their own earpieces. Mm as a hybrid crossover into this, but that obviously adds cost. Mm, mm. So you're going to have traditional audio production and then you're going to also have to facilitate yeah. all the battery changes every time you rent out a receiver mm. yeah. and collect them back again at the end. And uh, the performers coped okay with performing in that kind of environment? Uh, I mean, yeah, they're all on IEMs and... They had monitors, they yeah. had floor monitors. So it was quite unusual. You took When you took the cans off, you could hear them opera singers project, oh, so you can hear the singer. Yeah. Belt it out, yeah. You can hear the singer up there, and you can hear the score coming through the floor monitors. Where was the Where was the orchestra? Uh, they were in the studio, like right. on a fibre link. Yeah, yeah. So it was quite interesting yeah. to hear without them on. Yeah, it was really interesting. Yeah, like 64 orchestra lines mm. coming on fibre to front of house. Mm. Um, but, you know, it, it's much more consistent than mm. sitting there listening to bluster mm and sound being blown around yeah, yeah and the inconsistency of every seat being different no matter how yeah. good as we know mm. no matter how good the des design of audio the dispersion is the issue yeah, yeah. yeah. and then this, you're outside and it surprised me greatly because i thought it was going to suck mm. and it didn't no it no. was the other way well tony david mm. cray is a gun i have mm. i've stood ne next to him when he's been he mixed opera on the harbour last uh, year and uh, I've, I've seen what he does yeah. and his level of attention to detail is absolutely staggering mm. yeah like he is an incredible craftsman to, to watch in action so yeah. yeah there's a lot of moving parts in an opera oh yeah, yeah. um you know when you consider that these are fully reinforced whereas mm. traditional opera there's not a lot of reinforcement no 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 it's, it's natural you acoustic went, though. Mm. So I'm, I'm, sure. cult <laughs> I'm cultured, Sophie. There yes, are, you are. There are aspects to me that you just don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> and never will. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Be quiet. Well, with that, let's move on to an excerpt from uh, Gearbox and just have a bit of a preview of what's going on there. Jason, Sennheiser Digital mm. Speech Line. Yeah, Speechline Digital Wireless from Sennheiser. Look, I'm really, really impressed by this. You're actually, the audio you're hearing right now is uh, I'm talking on the handheld, Julius. And I'm on the Lavellia. Yeah, Lavellia. 
Beautiful. Um, so, speech line, as you quite rightly pointed out, the clue is in the name. This product is very, very squarely aimed at speech applications. Mm. So we're talking corporate and education. Segment. Yeah, yeah. So they're, they're deliberately emphasising in all of the marketing and the way it's positioned mm. that it's not really a music performance product. It's for managing a lot of, of radio mics in a you know small corporate space or, a, or even a larger university. All right, if you want to see uh, the rest of that Gearbox review, please head to this URL now. In the meantime, Meg, that's it all. Wrap it up. Bring it on I home. I know. Well, silence is golden. <laughs> um, we'll see you next week. Thank you.